we have that, probably nothing, but they look good, lots of honey. Um, I couldn't tell how big the cluster was, but the, the bees were spread out on four or five frames at least. Um, they look fine, but yeah they were in my face, so I'm gonna leave them alone. Alright, this is the other hive, and it is, uh, I think, should be, I hope, absolutely packed with bees and I expect to see some bees hanging up top hanging on to the insulation uh, I wish I brought some spray so I could spray them down a bit and then shake them off the inner cover thing but anyway let's see what happens oh yeah lots of bees this is gonna be messy oh yeah hold me Lots of bees. Oh man. No mold. Lots of bees, lots of honey. It looks like it. Alright, we'll put this here. Okay, this back on top. And get the hell out of here. <coughs> okay, so now we're back to the other hive. And I got a few dead bees there. So this is a piece of hard insulation up top, nice and thick. And I've got it duct taped on the side and on the other side, the underside, because it seems they were able to... Oh, it doesn't look too bad now. But I've, I've noticed in the other hives they were chewing through the insulation. So I've, I've got it... Um, I got the other side of it, it's all taped up with duct tape, so I don't think they can chew through the duct tape, but we'll find out. Hopefully not. But both of them look good. Um, technically these are condensing hives. They have basically top insulation, no top ventilation, just bottom ventilation, and insulation up top, and a little bit of a wrap, but mostly it's insulation up top. And uh, keeps all the heat in, the bees do their thing, la da 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 da. They get the moisture that they need, but not too much, not too little. I'm just checking to see if there's any cracks in the seams. I might put a bit of tape, I'm gonna put a tape, some tape on that. Right, let's go over to the other hive. A lot more bees in this hive, as expected. Oh, uh, look at this. This is, oh, see. So, this is where they chewed through. Because they're actually, oh, so they didn't chew through. The, oh no, they did. Look, you can see here where they chewed through here. And there's a notch in the top right here. So they just started working on that notch and going up into the uh, insulation. Okay. So now I got it flipped over. And that's it. So, um, yeah, that's fine. However, I'm going to. I'm going to tape up that hole. These gloves are excellent, by the way. I really wouldn't mind a version of beekeeping that didn't require any duct tape. Alright, they're in there. Let's open up this bottom entrance. They look good. A little bit of moisture. I saw a little bit of moisture in there. A little bit of mold. 
But maybe that's just the way it is. You just can't get by without mold. Whoop. There's always going to be a little bit, I suppose. Well, there's a lot of bees in this hive. Let's see how many dead bees are in the hive. Oh, yeah. Whoop. But it makes sense that there's more dead bees in a hive that has more bees. So that's it. They're eating. They're eating their. Uh, they're digging into their uh, their comb. Either they're making baby bees, or they're eating their honey. I don't know which is which right now. I don't care. They usually have it worked out better than I do. So. I will probably, they seem to have pretty good, they seem to be okay for honey. So I'd say they're good for uh, at least another uh, two weeks, which is mid-March. But I'm probably going to put some pollen on them as soon as I can, just to give them, just to see if it gives them an extra boost. Because I don't mind having a little extra boost. Uh, the bees in this location do better than the bees in Flat Rock. And they may not need as much tender loving care. Yeah, the ones in Flat Rock, they, they probably would do well with some protein. So if I were to continue with the um, condensing hive setup, which is what I got here, I'd probably stick to this because you can't see it now, but there's three mediums in there, which is probably a little bit more than a deep or a single, as some people like to call them. The bees are up top, but they're not absolutely clinging to the inside of the inner cover. They do that, I think, when they run out of food. They just, they get to the top, it's cold, they're hungry, and they just move up to the top, and then they, they just cling on to whatever's up top. So big, thick piece of, was it R10 insulation, but it's two inches thick, so does that make it R20? I think it is, I don't know. But anyway, it's as thick as I could get, and this is the most insulation as I could put up top, and I think that that's fine. This is just basically a windbreak. Uh, maybe it reflects heat back in, I don't know. I, I, I really, I have my doubts about all these little thin wind breaks. They keep the wind off the bees, but I don't know. The, the, what kind of insulation does this provide? Is it really that much? I don't know. And that's it. Bottom entrance. Bees come out the bottom entrance when they need to. I assume that Queen is already laying. The cluster's going to get big. She's going to have lots of honey, and, and probably around April they're going to start building up. And hopefully they'll just come on down to the bottom entrance and uh, work their way out and just live happily ever after. So this is the other hive. It's a bit weaker than that one over there, but exactly the same setup. And it has a brand new young queen who's laying like a firecracker, or at least she was when I put her in here last summer. Let's just take this out. Yeah, so not as much bees. This last summer, the queen, the original queen in this hive uh, was getting old and failing and so I got rid of her and gave them a brand new queen. Look at this. Oh. Hmm. Unusual to see pupa discarded like that at this time of year. Oh. What does that mean? I don't think I've ever seen pupa thrown away like that. There must be something. Hmm, I wonder if they dig them out, like if there's something, if they're sick. Let me just see. Let's take a look. They have purple eyes. Hmm, I don't know what that, what that is. I have to go look it up. Yeah. It's possible some moisture, just moisture got into the hive, like actually leaked into the hive and cooled off some brood and they just discarded them. Anyway, so they're not as big. The cluster in this, this colony isn't that big. But hopefully the queen is alive and not in this, this bunch of... That's a drone. Okay, well... Unusual to see discarded pupa like that. Whatever. There you go. 
So they're in there. This is this is a, a top entrance that I've got plugged up with a cork right now. And I'll open that if I feel like they need it. If I was in this area, if this, this hive was next to my house, on really warm days, I would pop that cork and let them get out for quicker, easier cleansing fights. But I can't really do that here, so they'll just have to get down and work it out themselves. But it's about 10 degrees Celsius today. Good day for cleansing fights. So you can see there's a few bees getting in and out. Looking okay. I'm not gonna put this board over the inner cover to block the wind because uh, I, I want them to get some ventilation and I don't think that's going to kill the ventilation but and it doesn't but I uh, just like to get some fresh air in there I think the fresh air can trigger their uh, uh, cleaning duties they, 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 they come out and they want to clean out the hive they, they start pulling out dead bees so I'm just going to leave that open like this for now and uh, that's it, we're done. That smoker did not stay lit. And that bee's trying to, trying to get back in because it probably came out of that hole or it can smell pheromones around this hole, but it can't get in. That's the way she is, the way it goes. So that one looks good, totally fine. A little bit of uh, moisture in the near the end bars on the sides and the corners, which seems to be typical for my bees and this one, a little bit the same, way more bees in that hive, a lot less bees in this hive, but they both look dry, no mold, no poop in, on the, all over the frames. Uh, the hives didn't smell like poop when I opened them. When they don't smell like poop, I'm happy, because poop uh, can be the first sign of inevitable decline. Yeah, so I'm curious to see how this turns out. This is my first time officially, you know, deliberately following the condensing hive model. For my bees. I'm not yet convinced that the poly hive is the best hive on the block, but uh, this like this here might be fine, but what I like about the poly hive is that it's light. It lasts 20-30 years if you treat them right, and I don't have to wrap them. There's no farting around with the, in the winter with any kind of insulation, which I love. Lots of uh, animal tracks. So, okay, I, I guess I didn't put that top on flat the last time I was here. So let's take a quick peek. This is how this hive is set up. It's got three medium supers, a whole bunch of bees, wooden inner cover, no top entrance. This is the um, ventilation rim. Some people call it a ventilation box. And then they got that big honking thing over there. They call that a vent box. If you're in the DE hive world, I call this a ventilation rim though. And I'm not a big fan of the, the big box that goes on top of the DE hive. I think the ventilation rim is fine on its own. So this is a bit of a weird setup. It's got the standard inner cover on top. Top entrance is blocked and it's got piece of hard insulation on top of the inner cover which should provide enough insulation I hope the only thing and the tricky thing is the inner cover hole I didn't put screen on it before I put this insulation before I put this hive together over the before the winter and uh, so the bees are going to be coming out of that hole so hopefully not too not too big of a mess though so let's just see what I see if I can just lift this up there we go. That's that. Boop. Oh yeah, I also have a, let's see. I have a couple holes drilled in this inner cover for ventilation, extra ventilation in the summertime. Anyway, let's just see what we got here. I don't have anything. I don't have smoke. I got nothing. So we're just being stupid here. Here we go. No, oh, no. There they are. Let's see what we can see. Yeah. Okay. 
That's not too bad. Now, I hate to do this, but I'm gonna do it. Pop that cover, because it's 10 degrees Celsius. I just wanna have a quick peek to see if they're okay. See, that's the worst part of it. That big crack. Breaking that propolis seal. It's been sealed since last, last summer. Anyway, here we go. Oh, okay, there they are right there. Lots of honey. Smallish cluster. Whoop, nice. Okay, lots and lots and lots of honey, lots of honey. So hopefully that's just the tip of the cluster and not a small cluster. So they're staying clustered like that because they're a little bit chilly. So I'm not gonna chill them anymore. But they're good, they're good for food. I will eventually, if I get a warm day and I see the bees flying, I will open up this hive and give them a pollen patty. Gives them some pollen. And I have real pollen that I'm gonna mix, mix in with my pollen patty. Okay, so that looked pretty good. And this hive hasn't had any, I didn't use any duct tape to, to seal in the crack underneath the inner cover because they had propolized it really well. And hopefully I didn't ruin that seal completely then. Even though I clearly like broke the seal, I think you, you can put it down and it'll, it'll, it'll re reseal from the heat of the cluster. I think it's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. They've been through worse. Well, that was easy. But it was enough to give me a sense of what's going on. I would guess that if I poke this little baby open, that's right smack in the middle of the hive. Oh yeah, there they are. Yeah. Cool. So they're there. Uh, they were clustered really low in the hive. These two boxes were full of honey going into the winter. And now I think they're here. They're not up, they're not even up here yet. So I think mostly they're just, they're just right here. I think the cluster is just right here in the front of the hive. It's probably clustering towards the front because this is the warmest side of the hive. The sun comes this way throughout the day and ends up right here and then sort of ends up there. So this is where most of the heat from the sun is coming from and the cluster definitely gravitates towards the sunny side of the hive if they're in a cold climate like this and mine they definitely are. What else can I say that might be informative? This is um, these little holes in that duct tape and little holes in this duct tape right here. You can't, I don't know if you can see it, but that's from, uh, that's from a Northern Flicker pecking on the hive. But then I painted, I put on this here sort of hunter orange spray paint and I think that, that did the trick. They haven't been pecking on the hive since then. I'm gonna you know, rewind this footage and look at it later and just to analyze what was going on inside the hive. I enjoy taking videos and photos of my bees because it allows me to look at things closely uh, afterwards and notice a lot of things that you don't notice when you're, you know, you, you, some, when you're trying to get in and out of the hive as quick as you can. So I might notice something that I, that, that's alarming, like why are they right here? Why are they just clustered right just out the front here uh, and not covering up the, all the frames? I don't know. Uh, but I've seen some bees that cluster with a, a cluster that looks like this. It looks like the size of my fist. And they come out in the spring with a, with a, cl a cluster that's really not much stronger than my fist. And they don't do a single thing. They just sit there until... Um, well, until natural pollen starts coming in. I can give them syrup and I can give them pollen patties and they just sort of peck away at it. But once the real thing comes in, they just go boom. And then within a week, you gotta, you better get the boxes on them because they'll, they're, they're, they're ready to swarm. Um, and I think those are the Russian uh, bees that do that. Oh, there's a probably can't see it, but I can hear it. There's a, there's either a squirrel or, a, or actually a large animal of some sort walking through the woods up here. It's a squirrel, must be a squirrel. I can hear the, I can hear the, 
Oh, no, it's, oh, no, there must be a few squirrels. I can hear the, uh, the, 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 the stepping in the snow. Yeah, it's a bunch of squirrels. Anywho, looking good. And this is, uh, shit. And this is the uh, uh, hive tool that I painted with this hunter orange, which is much, much better than red. Hunter orange, fluorescent colors, yellow. Just, that's that's perfect for uh, people who are colorblind, or color deficient. Sorry. These are squirrel tracks. There's a rabbit around here too. I haven't seen it. I'd love to uh, set up a camera, uh, one of those trail cameras. So let's just take a quick look. Why not? Why don't we? Oops. So this is the uh, the nuke box that I have. It's pretty much buried in the snow, though it's surrounded by insulation up top and bottom and on the sides. So I hope all this snow isn't melting into the hive somehow, finding a spot and filling up the nuke with water. And I can't even get down there to look through the hole to see if the bees are alive because the snow is too high. Here we go. This is the Poly hive, and there's a few bees down there. So the funky paint job that I gave them seems to have done the trick in regards to uh, deterring the northern flickers or the woodpeckers from pecking on the hive, because there's, there's lots of patched up little holes that I've had to clean up. Eh, they're getting in and out. I've talked to some beekeepers online who say that uh, don't worry about all the bees on the bottom of the hive in the winter because the bees will clean it up in the spring. But man, sometimes it's so thick with bees that they never clean it up. It just becomes a big carpet of dead bees that gets moldy. And you gotta just scrape it up and clean it up. And I, I just, I do that in the spring. I've gotten to the habit of, during my first hive inspections of the year, I just do a complete overhaul and complete the cleanup of the hive and then I reduce the hive down to the smallest box that I can find and I wish I'd put this hive together with three mediums instead of four because that bottom medium is pretty much empty and uh, I, th I wonder about the bees being able to go all the way from if they're clustering up top coming all the way down to the bottom and getting out to, to poop or as the Puritans like to call it, cleansing flights. So hopefully this is a good sign and hopefully there's just a whole bunch of bees in there and the queen is laying up a storm and she's completely encased in polystyrene, which is nice insulation. And the only way water or anything can get in is through the bottom. There's no, they can't, nothing can get through these, these the cracks of these supers, as far as I know. And so they should be well insulated, nice and warm, no heat escaping anywhere. If all goes according to plan and they don't get dysentery and then no SEMA or anything like that, they should just be raring to go as soon as the weather turns around, which probably won't be for another two months. And that owl does nothing. It's just, it's just heavy. I just use it as a weight. Uh, whoop, there's a bee. It seems, I don't know if the, 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 the ground has shifted, but, or if it's just me sitting in the, on the snow bank here, but the, the hive seems to have been tilted a bit. It seems to be tilting down on this side a bit. I do see some poop right there, and a little bit right there, and a little bit right there, and some on the ground, or in the snow here. But I don't smell poop coming out of the hive, so that's, I, I, that's a good sign in my book. I think it's a bee. You'll see too when the bees come out. Uh, oh, that one's gone. They, they do a, basically a corkscrew pattern around the hive, or sometimes a figure eight corkscrew, I guess. And then they just fly off and die. <laughs> I opened the top entrance to one of my hives, uh, I think it was last week, and it was warm. So I popped it open, the sun was out, and they all came out for cleansing flights. And not one of them came back. <laughs> I had the camera set up. I wanted to 
to see how many when they go out for cleansing flights what's what's the percentage of bees that just you know fall in the snow and die and every one of them <laughs> there must have, there wasn't that many it was probably like uh probably like 20 bees that came out over like a one hour period and not one of them came back so this bee is Let's see if i can get him to land on me oh. all right oh, poop he had poop That's it. They're getting out. I think the the fresh air, the, the get, once they get a sense of that the, the 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 oxygen and not just like the carbon dioxide that's building up inside the hive, but oxygen gets in there and they go, "Woo!" Something something triggers it, and the, and they all start coming out for cleansing flights. The only thing I don't like about this particular design of the poly hive of of this hive is that uh, it doesn't have an easy way of putting on a, a mouse guard, which is what I got down there. I also use quarter inch mesh on my hives as a mouse guard because it's basically a shrew guard for me to keep shrews out and uh, I don't really think there's any difference between this and the shrews, shrew guard, the quarter inch mesh. Oh, okay, I got a bee buzzing around my face, as long as it's a happy bee, I don't care. There's this bee. Whoop. And tumble, tumble, down you go. There's this one over there. Just wandering around. I think as soon as I get a warm day, uh, I'm going to put on some pollen patties on this hive. On these hives, these flat rock hives anyway, as soon as I can. I think they have plenty of honey. They're not going to burn through it anytime soon. And hopefully the... Uh, the protein will get them, well, it'll maybe encourage the queen to lay eggs, start, start laying, building up some brood, because in this area, they need every bit of help they can get. But again, you gotta be, you gotta be careful, because you give them, you give them, uh, give them solids, if they get stuck in the hive for, a few weeks then they end up pooping inside the hive and there you go it all goes downhill from there so this is a weird hive that I have uh, set up next to my house and the, the, the northern flicker has been pecking at this and pecking on the side of it and also pecking and it was pecking right right here pecking right through the wood between the supers um, so I I sprayed some of this funky paint on it and that seems to have done the trick it's not I don't I think it may have pecked on this but it hasn't actually pecked on the wood or the hive itself apparently um, uh, chickens and well big birds that peck they love styrofoam they're really attracted to it for some reason anyway this is the uh, here we go this is the uh, hive that I popped the top off the other day. Let them get out for cleansing flights. It was really warm. And then all the bees came out and none of them came back. Anyway, that's that. Um, and this is, uh, my only concern with this is that I've got this bit of a tape, bad tape job around this this feeding rim because this has this this one I gave this uh, colony some some fondant a little while ago and the, the tape the moisture could get down into that tape and then run into the hive and I'm just hoping it doesn't hope like it's just I hope that it's just it's got enough good enough seal that it's not going to do that and even if there is some moisture gets in hopefully it'll just run down the sides yep but this one has uh, one two three four mediums and they're not Coming, they're not coming down to the to the bottom entrance too often, so this is why I'm every now and then, uh, if it's on a warm sunny day, when the wind isn't blowing, I'll pop the top and let them get out for a few cleansing flights. Yep, that's what I do. And if you look here, you can see. I don't know if you can see through it here. Yeah, there it is, right, right, sort of dead center. You can see the big split in the uh, the mesh in this 
uh, I guess you call it a veil hat or whatever. And they all get this way. The cheaper ones get, get that way quicker. I don't think I have the name, the brand on this, but yeah, everyone knows where I got this. But uh, yeah, the cheaper ones, they, 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 the mesh disintegrates quicker. But to make them last longer, when you hang them, hang them like this so that they're, they're open. Don't just throw them on the, on the pile where, where they crumple up like that, because when they crumple up, it's just basically, you're just bending the fabric or sometimes the metal screen you're bending it and just weakening the, the connection between the, I don't know, the mesh and, and you get little, well, you get big holes like that that the bees can get through. So when hanging, hang them like this. Or when storing, hang them like that. I'm in my shed now and this is, the, this is a pot that I bought for melting down some wax, which I still haven't done. This is what the wax looks like now. It's full of water. It's been freezing, but this is the big. This is a bucket of wax, and the bucket down there is full of wax, and that's full of water, and it's losing some of its color. But I think it'll still be okay. You melt it down, it's still wax, or not. We'll see what happens. But that's that's how I roll. I'm pretty pretty goofy. <sighs> but uh, yeah, I'm gonna melt that down and make some wax. Um, I'd love to make my own waxed foundation but uh i'd also i'm pretty happy going foundationless these days too so yep mm -hmm. 